Wait, is this just gate? Chapter 248 Written by Pepper Antique When Amina reunited with James it had been after hours of anticipation. She had seen him, and his unexpected companion, once the army had made its way roughly halfway up the winding path up the mountain. One of the sergeants helping guide the formation up had pointed out the figures standing at the head of the path, and her looking glass had shown her who it was. She'd wanted to ride Steve up to him as fast as she could. But she had a professional duty to stay by the troops and not let her love life make her look like some lovesick teen. Plus the path was already packed with the troops in formation, and to rush past on a massive drake would have put her or them in danger of sliding down the loose scree on the sides, potentially to their deaths. She did wonder why he didn't fly down though. She knew he could. He would have been there in a matter of moments, and his new flying style wouldn't have endangered anyone the way his previous method would have. And who was the tall elf beside him? Just what had happened in the weeks since last they'd seen each other. When the formation finally reached the crest of the trail and began fanning out she saw James greet several of the commanders and sergeants as they passed. She noticed that he was wearing his green medallion openly on his chest something he had done away with a long time ago when he'd become fluent in their language. She also noticed that, after greeting them, many of the elves among the troops, especially those few dark elves, would bow to the man standing beside him. The elf would always bow slightly in return, even after what had to have been the thirtieth or fortieth such greeting. Who was this stranger? Steve stole her thunder once the two of them had reached the top. She'd wanted to slide off of him and rush over to her fiancé and embrace him. But the massive reptile had different plans. One they'd gotten clear of the formation he'd charged over and practically headbutted James onto the gravel and began licking him. RRHPH. James spat as the drake's tongue coated his face in thick saliva. James fought to keep the long-forked enemy away even as Steve's head pushed him flat and pressed against him. Off boy! He yelled. A-A-G-H. Then Steve completely covered him with his jaw. James kicked feebly at the thick manner of hair on the drake's neck. Amina. He cried out, though it was muffled by his oppressor. You deserve- She yanked at Steve's fur and began slamming her hand into his side. He lifted his head to look at her and she quickly bent down and forcibly pulled James up onto his feet and into an embrace, ignoring the layer of slime on his face as he wrapped his arms around her to return the gesture. Steve was the only reason I didn't think you were dead. She said softly into his ear. James pulled back a bit and used the sleeve of his shirt to wipe his face somewhat clean. Then he pulled her back in and pressed his forehead against hers. I know. He said. I'm so sorry. I thought the worst had happened to you too as well. What happened? She asked. He almost died said a flat somewhat jilting voice. Amina's head snapped off to the side. In her excitement to see James again she'd almost forgotten that he wasn't alone. Standing only a few steps away was a tall, muscular yet slim, dark elf. He wore simple, almost skin-tight, clothes of red and dark blue. She looked at him curiously for a moment before she saw a small spider resting on his shoulder, and a series of multicolored strings and a gold and white band wrapped around his right arm. Sorry. James said. Amina, this is Kai. Full name unpronounceable. One of the twelve guardians. He was about to introduce her to the elf when Amina quickly pushed away and took a knee with her head bowed. An honor. She said now that she knew just who, and what, the elf was. I wasn't aware that one of the guardians was present. James gawked at her in surprise. Kai. This is Dash. Princess, and General, Amina of Petrovus. Kai interrupted. Now James gawked at Kai. You two. Know each other? He wondered. Kai nodded. As a guardian I have entreated with the royal family numerous times. He said simply. After all, my domain of protection covers nearly half of the country. He held his hand out and Amina looked at it curiously. Please princess. This is hardly a formal setting. Please stand. My apologies. She said as she let him aid her to her feet. For what? He asked, beating James to the words by only a split second. 
you have done me no wrongs. And I am not surprised to be unrecognized. The last time I was in your father's castle you were still a bundle in your mother's arms. Am I? Missing something here? James asked. What's happening? James. Amina hissed. This is a guardian prince. James was about to agree and ask what the deal was when Kai beat him to talking again. Not on this day princess. He said in a low voice, his face barely containing anger. Both she and James looked at Kai in surprise. Without realizing it, both of their hands went to their weapons of choice. Him to his pistol, and her to her sword. Today. He continued. I am an avenging prince. Then, as if a switch had been thrown, his face lightened. But James can be the one to tell you why. He said as his right hand began to twitch and spasm. I am. Dealing with something. She turned back to look at James who bore a pained half-smile. Been a rough week. He said softly. Come on. I'll tell you while the rest of your people come up. He led her over to the makeshift camp and showed her to its lone chair. Then he kicked open one of the tents, revealing two squirming, web-wrapped, people. Plus we have guests. Vickers was more than a little mad at what happened when he finally made his way to the first of the Miffies. Once he'd gotten within twenty-five yards of it he'd been able to move a bit more freely. After all they were primarily defensive weapon systems. They weren't designed to engage targets at close range. As a result they were unmanned and the machine gun turrets on top of their cabs were empty. Sure they still had cameras, but their primary sensor suites wouldn't be able to detect him that close, and even if they did the primary weapons wouldn't be able to engage him unless the entire rig relocated. It had taken him hours to get this close. Almost a whole day once he'd gotten over the dune nearest to the vehicle. But he'd neutralized these kinds of defensive positions in training before, including one Chinese knockoff that was supposed to have an even better sensor suite. Not that he ever trusted that kind of intel. But still, for training purposes they'd respected the listed specs and proceeded as necessary. Now he had even more tricks, what with being able to mask his body's temperature. Plus he had an ace in the hole for how he was going to disable them. So he was more than a little annoyed when, as he got within a few yards of the truck, the sand near its base began to move and writhe, as if something was moving under it. After a few moments several large spiders emerged. He'd done training when he was becoming a seal to avoid freaking out about creepy crawlies. Had even eaten a few spiders during survival training. Hell, you couldn't become a sniper if creepy crawlies could make you give up your position. Still, the sight of what these things had done to the two soldiers the day before was fresh in his mind as the large tan arachnid seemed to stare at him curiously. He had to fight to suppress the urge to shudder. He may have been under the radar with the Miffy. But he still didn't want to move too much and draw the attention of its remote operators. One of the spiders crawled up until it was almost touching him and stared into his eyes even as they hid behind the shroud of his ghillie. What do you want? He hissed at it in a whisper. The spider perked up and raised its two front legs. He thought he'd seen a video somewhere that that was how spiders did greetings or mating rituals or something. He stared at it curiously. You with the elf? He asked. The arms moved up and down. That a yes? He asked. Then he thought about the situation. Ah. I'm talking to a fucking spider. What the fuck happened to my life? The spider tilted a bit, almost like a dog tilting its head. Vickers let out a deep, incredibly exhausted, sigh. Okay. He said, surrendering to the surreal nature of the situation. If you're with the elf raise and lower your legs twice. There was a delay as, he assumed, the spider relayed the message back. How? He didn't know, and kind of didn't want to. Then the spider raised all of its legs up and down twice. Vickers blinked rapidly at what he was assuming was some form of sarcasm. Though, from the elf or the spider he wasn't entirely certain. Okay spider elf. He said. You here to help? Or are you just showing off? The spider raised its legs, only the front pair this time, and lowered them again. Vickers stared at it. He sighed again. 
Fair enough. He said. Can you actually hear me? Or are you reading my lips or something? This time the spider didn't raise its legs, but instead rushed across the sand, skittering its legs rapidly as it did. Vickers watched it curiously as it did, whatever it was doing. After a moment it stood to the side and made like it was headbutting in the direction of the mess it had made. Vickers peered up at the miffy for a second. Then, gambling that no one was actively watching the camera feeds, lifted up a bit to get a better look at the spider's work. Ha! Huh. He said in surprise as he saw a crude drawing of a human ear. He looked down at the spider in surprise. Nice. Oh, I'll show you the game plan. The spider watched him create the makeshift space curiously, then after a moment of hesitation, rushed into one of the openings of the ghillie cloak. Vickers slowly pulled one of the Creo rounds from his bottomless bag and held it up where the spider to see. See this? He said. I got about 30 of these things. And they are going to cause these things. He gestured in the direction of the Miffy. To have a real bad day if they decide to use M. The spider, and by extension Kai, watched and listened curiously as Vickers laid out his plan. Um. One of the techs in the control room said. What is it? The major asked from where she was reading the info that she'd gotten from Earth. Um. Vehicle 3 has eyes on something you're gonna want to see. The young woman said in surprise. I'm already setting off a drone to get a better view. Main screen. The major replied. The tech nodded and the main screen was suddenly taken up by a feed overlooking the dunes towards the entrance to the desert. Ah. Just as expected. On the screen an entire army was marching toward them in formation. At the front of it were a horse, being ridden by the princess she'd seen in their intelligence reports, a massive furred lizard being ridden by Captain Choi, and a dark-skinned man who seemed to float along the ground as if he was hovering. She didn't recognize that one. Behind them was at least 3,000 Royal Army soldiers of different types. Some on horseback. Some flying in the air and wearing ornate robes. Many simply marching in the familiar style that any soldier would recognize. Called Driscoll and Nguyen. She said as she stood up. Let M know what's going on. She was about to leave when she noticed that the lone muck marcher, the one she only knew as Five, was staring at one of the feeds. She'd expected the armored woman to respond, since she'd have an easier time reaching Driscoll than anyone else. Something wrong? She asked as she turned to face the armored operative. Five turned her helmeted head ever so slightly, as if noticing the major for the first time. Gnome. Said the tinny-sounding speakers in a raspy voice. She began walking out of the room ahead of the major. Driscoll's already on his way. I just saw something funny. Gonna go check it out. The major watched Five stomp out of the room, then turned to the tech whose station she'd been looming over. She raised an eyebrow in question. The tech shook his head and shrugged. I don't know. He said. I couldn't see what she was looking at. She didn't say anything to me. The deep sea warriors were eccentric almost to a person, even Driscoll, though they tried to act stoic and mysterious. She wondered if maybe Five had been having some kind of episode. Or maybe she'd just been communicating with the other members of their team. She knew they could do that without anyone else knowing. Their suits were made for stealth after all. She set it aside as a matter for later as she looked back up at the main screen. Zoom in on the lizard. She said as she sat back down and waited for Driscoll and Nguyen to show up. Let's see what Choi's looking like. 